And welcome back. Today we are flying out a Mustang Mark 1A. It's the British Premium version. It's identical to the American one, except I like the skin a little bit more. First off, no chat isn't back. This is relatively old footage, but getting straight into it. What are the strengths of this thing? What are the things that it isn't that great at? The main selling point of this plane will be the four Hispanos at 3.3. The firepower is pretty damn good, but keep in mind that Especially in prolonged dogfights, this thing will end up falling straight out of the air. It is pretty fast, it is pretty maneuverable, but the climb rate and just the engine power at lower speeds isn't really there. So if you really are going to dogfight someone in the long run, try to wrap it up as quickly as you can. Preferably, you want to enter a fight at very high speeds, you can use your, your compression or rather your lack thereof. But do keep in mind that your rudder doesn't really work at higher speeds either. So you just kind of want to use your high speed to get an angle in for when you start going below 550, 500 kilometers an hour. And if you then get your guns on people, most of the time they will just end up dying. The Hispanos are pretty good nowadays. And especially at 3.3, you have four of them as well. With a pretty decent chunk of ammo, it's 500 rounds total. It's not the most, but it's definitely enough to kill half the enemy team. But my main gripe with this thing is if you start facing planes like the BF109 F4 and just basically anything that climbs very well, it is very annoying to deal with if they never really commit to you. You can try to dogfight them, it's not like you will lose every dogfight instantly as long as the enemy isn't better than you. But it's just very annoying when people start climbing on the 6 because you can't really do much about it because they will eventually run you out of energy and you are also not fast enough to outrun someone that's diving on you it is pretty fast but you're not going to be going 650 kilometers an hour on the deck this is relatively low tier and at lower tiers well most of the planes can just dive on you and completely negate the fact that you are faster than them so that has been my main gripe with it but if you get above people and if you start getting games like this where everyone is on the deck and you can just run them down and start boom and zooming them this thing is extremely potent but it takes just one just one guy that likes to sit at altitude, doesn't engage you, but just waits for you to mess up in the slightest of margins. And then he's just gonna run you down. And there's really nothing you are gonna be doing about it. And it's very, very annoying. But to get into the gameplay, I have a 202 in front of me. He doesn't seem to be much of a threat. He's going RTB. So I'd rather engage the I-185 that's clearly going for me right now. So that I do not get near their airfield. If he wants to disengage, we are in the middle of the map. And I still have somewhat of a shot to kill him before he actually gets away. He will be going a lot faster. So I'm going to be turning into him 90 degrees. He turns a lot worse than us and he is faster. So if he makes a mistake here, he will instantly get in front of me. He turns in front of me, which is... Well, not the, the biggest mistake of his life, but then he turns back in front of me, making it so that I do not have to turn. I instantly get a gun solution on him. We shoot a few rounds and down he goes. And that's going to be kill number five with less than half our ammo load. And that's just the consistency of these guns, or at least when I flew this thing. The guns are pretty good. They are still kind of hit or miss, especially when you start shooting at bombers or playing like the ITP. And right now I'm going 700 kilometers an hour. I'm not going to be taking the head on because I simply do not need to. And I'm going to put it into a very shallow climb until he starts getting guns on me. And then I will just start going horizontal. And if he follows this, he will run out of energy himself. Make sure to keep looking around in case someone is diving on me. There's so many AI on the map too that I'm not too sure who is an AI and who is a player. Which makes this very annoying. I do outturn this guy and I have a lot more energy coming into this fight. So this should be a very clean done deal. Shoot a few rounds, we crit is still. He then breaks his flaps off and he rolls straight into the water because he feels like taking a swim. And there you go. And here is a little 2v2 versus two guys that are higher than me. Jose over there is in the SB2C. He is of course not going to be in the best plane in the world. But he can make something work. The Yak-1 over here rips his flaps in a straight line. Indicating to me that he probably isn't the most bright player. So we're just going to spray a little bit in the head on. And at a very big chance he is going to collect some rounds. And there he goes. Gets set on fire. And the Yak-1 as Yaks do is of course going to put that out. So who do we go for here? We have the 190 going for Jose. He's on his 6 and the 109 is in front of him. So I want to go for the 190 first. But the 109 ends up going closer to me. So right now I'm just flying in the middle. Seeing who is going to get closer first. The 109 is going to pitch up in front of us. We shoot him. We crit him. And then we do the same thing 
to the 190A1. Now they are both hit. I'm not too sure how badly damaged the 190 is. But it looks like he's not doing very well. Because he is going to end up doing a little bit of a fidget spinner trick. In a second here. There he goes. Not sure what the fuck that was. But hey. Down he goes. And now we have the 109 on our 6. But he is so occupied trying to kill us. That Jose just gets his 6 for free. There he goes. Set on fire. And he is dead. The Yak then goes to land. RTB camps the base for about 10 minutes and then loses on tickets. Very stellar gameplay indeed. Here we are going head on with a 109. It's very safe to assume that I'm going faster than him. It's 109F. It's an F4 which is actually pretty damn dangerous. So I'm just not going to try and dogfight that. Even though I am going slightly faster. I'm not winning that dogfight. So I'm not even going to attempt that. The 109F4 is a very very dangerous plane. Especially if he starts on your 6. Even if you start from the head on. It is very annoying to fight. Because it just does basically everything better than you. Other than top speed. So right now. I'm just kind of using this A6M as bait. Because I can't really turn around right now. Because if I do that. I will just die with him. Everyone is turning after him. So I'm going to turn around right now. And see if I can maybe clean one or two guys over 6. And then he can probably deal with the last one by himself. We have an ITP in the background. That's actually disengaging. And he's coming back. In a very slight delay. Making it so that he is going to catch me off guard if I'm not paying attention. So I go for the 109 and 4 first. Because he is definitely the most dangerous guy there. And the two ITPs. While they are very annoying. They are not unkillable. Especially in the dogfight. The problem is there's three of them. And I have all of them on my 6. So what do we do? We are going to extend out. We're going to go as fast as we can. And try to make these guys compress. Go a little bit defensive. Try to go left and right as much as possible because they do compress and turn very badly to begin with. I thought about going into that for a shot but they were just a little bit too far away so I'm forced to turn back into these guys again. Make sure to not get hit by that 37 or even the Shivax. I'm just trying to keep it as low as possible so that they cannot actually get a gun solution on me. Right now the ITP breaks off for a split second and the one on my 6 is now far enough away. For me to just kind of straight line it for a little bit. Because I need to get my speed back up. But there comes guy number 5. A P47 spraying from 1.5 kilometers away. One ITP goes down. He is on fire. And he is about to hug a tree. The P47 for now however is very easily going to run me down. And the two ITPs on Jose 6 are also going into this direction. Which makes this very very annoying. So we try to pull up over his guns. I'm trying to get a gun solution as quickly as humanly possible. Because I need to kill this guy right here right now. I do not get the angle. And I'm just going to disengage. I'm going to get this guy on my 6 again. But I do have a teammate that's about to come in here. And maybe help me out. Which would be very helpful. That ITP there broke off from Jose to go for me. Which is why I couldn't go prolonged with the P47. And then the P47 does some weird shit where he goes left and right. Doesn't really know what to do. And I'm just going to put it into a very shallow climb. And then uh, Jose goes down. I couldn't help him out at all. Because he is just in a furball. And his P47 would kill me on his own. If I didn't put my, all my attention on just him. So I'm just going to go in a very slight climb here. I'm trying to get a little bit of altitude. So I can turn that into speed mid dogfight. But right now they're all on R6. The P47 gets broken off from me. Broken off of me. I don't know how to say that. By the B7. And right now I'm going to use the B7 as bait for a little bit and I'm gonna turn right back in I can't get there very quickly anyway so I rather wait just a little bit longer to get a little bit more of an advantage because I won't be there in time regardless so right now I have a little bit of altitude there's three guys here and we are all alone and what do we do I want that P47 dead the most the problem is with the ITPs that they climb pretty decent as long as they aren't overheating so what do I do? I break off to the left. I want to go towards my teammate. And I want to pick up a little bit of speed. Without actually well, getting too close to them. And by going sideways. It makes so that they will pitch up a little bit more for us. And if they then miss this angle. What ends up happening is. They are both basically stalled out. Directly below me. The ITP tries to pitch in for me here. So I need to dodge him. Instead of going for the guy below me. Otherwise I would have died right there. I want to go vertical here to kill the ITP. The problem is the P47 broke off and came back at the perfect time to make it so that I cannot re-engage him. So I have this guy energy trap together with the other uh, ITP. But the P47 just disengaged in a very proper manner making it so that I was not able to actually get away 
with stalling them out. Because I had them stalled out, I had him by the balls, but there was another teammate around making it so that I couldn't actually do anything. So we go head on for a little bit. I had to take it, because if I hadn't killed him right there, I would have died regardless. So we ended up going full commit head on. Very boring, but hey, I take it, it's 3v1, I need to get these numbers down. So up we go again. I'm trying to go for the stall again for the ITP. He turns very poorly. But right now the P47 is ending up pretty much in front of us. So I'm going to put my focus on him for now. If I can kill him without the ITP getting a shot on me. The P47 here is having a little bit more energy than us. So it makes us pretty annoying. P47 turns the other way. So we are going to go back in for the ITP. And see if he can get the shot in here. We do not because we do not have the energy. The P47 then breaks off and flies the opposite direction. And I can't disengage here. So I need to do this very risky thing. I try to go up over the nose of the ITP. In the hope that the P47 dies to the other Mustang. On the other side. That's coming in right now. And he does. He kills him. So we pull back up. And try to finish off the ITP. But hey, he gets killed by the teammate. If he came about 1 minute to 1.5 minutes later. I probably would have been out of energy. That's only so much I can do with a plane like this. Worked out pretty well in terms of footage, but I wish I had killed one more of those guys. Because, well, I like killing people, what can I say? Please do take that out of context, because it is completely true. And for right now, we are doing basically the same thing as we did earlier. Where we are just having a little bit of altitude and looking around. This is really just more footage, because I had some more. But in general, this plane is pretty straightforward. It is pretty relaxing to fly, because of course you are a 3.3. And I definitely take this thing over the S199 that I flew about a month ago because man that thing was painful but here we are going directly into the game Jose he has a 109E7 on his 6 but on his 6 is a little bit loosely he's way below him and he's way slower so he's really just going to be an easy kill here because he was very much occupied trying to run him down and now he's going about 250 kilometers an hour directly in my gun so we shoot a few rounds and he just simply explodes how neat is that and now it's basically cleanup duty. Because everyone is on the deck. I'm not too sure what's up with that lately. No one is really climbing anymore. Everyone is just scraping the deck. Even outside of the events. And I just don't get it. Getting a little bit of altitude. Getting a little bit of a safety net. And especially if your entire team does it. It's just going to give you so much more fun. It's going to give you so much more experience as well. In fighting people. It's going to make you a better player. And it's such... A small first step to do. All you have to do is get a little bit of altitude. I'm not even asking you to climb to the side. You just climb straight in. And this makes sure you, you can pick and choose who you want to engage. But to reach your own. We have an F4U here that's going in a very predictable straight line. So we shoot. He blows up. As everything does that you hit with this thing. Except for B18s of course. Bombers are still pretty durable to Hispanos. And it's the same with Shavax. The Shavax are very strong against fighters. But the second you have to shoot something down like a Lincoln or a Lancaster or B-17. God forbid a B-29. Then uh, well, those guns are not going to do anything. And the Shavax or the, the Hispanos are a little bit similar in that regard. Bombers seem a little bit more armored. And the HE filler in this just isn't strong enough. I'm not too sure what the reasoning is. But that's what it feels like to me. But for now we're just going to clean up two or more Bombers. And that's going to be the video. A little bit of a shorter one today. Again. Oh never mind. It's actually 40 minutes. That went by a lot quicker than I thought it did. I need to go for a ride. Pick up some stuff. And I will see you all next week probably. I am thinking about getting a 360 camera for my bike. For insurance purposes as well. And I thought. Well if some of you guys actually want to see some uh, vlogging in that kind of regard. For some update videos and stuff. I wouldn't mind doing that. Instead of doing, using the... Uh, the average random gameplay that I use in the background. If no one cares about it, then I won't use it. I'm going to buy the camera regardless. As I think it's a good way to check your, your driving and just things that you do wrong. Things you can improve on, see if you make a mistake. And, well, if something really does happen, I have the ability to watch it back and use it as evidence. But let me know what you think about it. I wouldn't mind doing it here and there. I'm not talking about it a weekly thing. It might be like once every two weeks. But we'll see when it happens. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all in the next week.